The number one question I get asked is, Sean, when did you know when you fully recovered? And I get it. When I was struggling with anxiety and I was getting physical symptoms, when I was getting scary intrusive thoughts, the DPDR, the weird emotions, that was my question too. When will I know when I recover? And I almost had like this countdown where I couldn't wait till these symptoms were gone and I could just go back to living. Well, in this video, I'm going to really share with you something that I wish somebody would have told me, which is, when do you know when you recover? And this isn't just from my personal experience, but this is from me helping people around the world and seeing them recover and seeing where they get these aha moments. So with that said, let's get it started. So when I was struggling with anxiety, I had such intense symptoms and my quality of life decreased so much that my metric of progress was, were the symptoms there or not? And my notion of recovery is, were the symptoms not there? Good, I've recovered. And I was really looking forward to that day where my symptoms really weren't there. And so you might be going through the exact same thing and you might be wondering, when does recovery happen? How do you know? And the answer is, is that there wasn't a singular moment when recovery happened, where I was just like, guys, I think I've recovered. I'm good. I've recovered. I'm done. And I hear people tell me, Sean, I'm at 70%, but I'm stuck at this 30%. Or Sean, I was at 70%, but now I feel like I'm at 20%. Recovery really doesn't work that way. It doesn't work in the zero to 100% scale. This is a notion that's made up in our minds. That's not really how anxiety works. And if you really want to understand that concept that I just mentioned, I created a video on it. I'll put the link up here that really breaks down this idea of zero to 100% and why that doesn't really work. So if you really want to understand that concept, the link is over here. Now, with that said, in the very beginning, just like you, my biggest focus was how do I eliminate these symptoms? And my biggest priority was eliminating these symptoms. And one of the biggest things that I find that people often do is that they're measuring their progress based on the symptoms. So if their symptoms are there, bad. If their symptoms are not there, good. And they're trying to strive to make sure that their symptoms are not there, right? And this is also why you get sold a lot of coping crutches, right? You wanna feel better in the moment? Cool, there's a demand for it. People will start selling you those things. And the problem with that is, is that when you're constantly trying to find ways to get better, you're running away from something. And the problem is, is that that's good with coping, but that doesn't help with anxiety recovery. So how does recovery look like? Well, the first thing to really understand is that a lot of the symptoms are happening because you don't really know what's happening, right? Why are you experiencing these symptoms? It's important to understand why these symptoms are happening. And once you understand what's happening, then it's focused on the response. So the first stage is really people are really stuck on how does recovery look like. And in that case, it's very important to prioritize understanding the mechanics of anxiety. That's why in this channel, we really focus on helping educate you on at least understanding what's happening because that's the first step to recovery. If every symptom is throwing you off and it's convincing you that there's something seriously wrong and if you're following your feelings too much, it will always mislead you and it will keep you in the cycle. So the first thing to break the cycle and really start on your recovery journey is understanding what's happening. And if you really want to know more, I have a free ebook down below. The link is there. It really breaks down what's happening and what to do to overcome it. The link is down below. Check it out. That being said, once I understood what was happening, then my focus was on responding, and that's really where we focus a lot of attention on in the mentorship. And so what happened was I was experiencing symptoms, and then I would respond. I wouldn't try to push the symptoms away. I would just focus on the correct response, and what I noticed over time was that the symptoms were going away. Sometimes it would come back, but I would just respond again, and then it would go away over time. And there would be some moments where I would have what we call setbacks, where I was feeling a lot better and I started even getting the idea that maybe I'm out of this and then all of a sudden the setback would hit. And then when the setback would hit, I would just double down on my response and just stay consistent. But then what happened was something very interesting. My focus in the very beginning was about overcoming the symptoms. But then what ended up happening is that 
Instead of focusing on anxiety recovery, my focus became slowly about living life. What happened was I started to slowly go back into life. Now, anxiety stripped everything away from me. I became agoraphobic. I wasn't working. I was living in my parents' house. I wasn't paying anything. I was losing a lot of weight and anxiety consumed me. Really, what I did the most was Google search. That was really my full-time job at the time. And so what happened over time was once I was responding, well, then I started slowly going back to living. I started focusing on getting a job. I was slowly hanging out with friends. I would start focusing on my career and then I would start focusing on other things. Now here's the interesting thing. My symptoms were still there, but what I noticed was they weren't as intense. Some days were bad, but I would just respond and what I would notice was the bad days would decrease over time. And so what happened was my attention changed. My attention changed from my symptoms are here, what do I do? I measure my progress based on my symptoms too. Okay, the symptoms are there, but I'm just gonna shift my attention to focusing on living. And then what happened over time is that I started doing this and I started getting more and more involved in life. My life got bigger and bigger and I started doing more things. And then something interesting happened and I call this the indifference threshold. Now what happened here was that I started getting symptoms, I was experiencing symptoms, I would go back to living and the symptoms were there. But over time, because my attention wasn't on it, I was indifferent towards it. I really didn't care. And so what happened was, is that my attention started focusing more and more on outside. And when I would check in, oh wait, are my symptoms there? Sometimes they were there, sometimes they were not. And over time, I just stopped even checking in. So really a big milestone in my recovery journey was this inflection point where I reached this indifference threshold where I truly did not care whether my symptoms were there or not. Now this doesn't happen overnight and there was a lot of practice and it took a lot of time and it also, I needed some validation that this was working and my validation was, you know, in the grand scheme, my symptoms weren't as debilitating as before. I, I did notice when if I would stop everything and I would just go back to Google searching or making anxiety a priority, my symptoms would get worse. And so that happened because again, my attention went back to the anxiety. So what I would do is I would recognize the anxiety was there, but then I would focus on other things. And once I hit this indifference threshold, that's really where I really didn't care whether the symptoms were there. And what happened was other things became more important in life. For me, it was grad school. For me, it was focusing on career. It was focusing on other things, going back to my old self, things that I was holding myself back from, getting acclimated to that, traveling the world, going back to restaurants, things like that, things that made me happy. And I started doing that. And what happened over time was that the symptoms went away on their own. Now, when did that happen? Well, because my focus was on living and my attention was there, I don't really know. And the thing is, is that the symptoms probably phased away over time. Some symptoms were a little bit more stubborn, but they would drop off as well. And some of the less stubborn symptoms hopped off earlier. So the idea is, is that recovery happened in layers. Now there's another component to recovery that I hardly ever talk about in this channel. It's something that I work with with more of the advanced group in my mentorship, which is uncovering the thought patterns, the behaviors and mindsets that made you fall into the cycle. But that happens later. So my recovery journey shifted over time. In the beginning, it was really focused on understanding what was happening, learning how to respond and slowly regaining life. And then it became letting go of the subject of anxiety and getting more involved in life. And then the third aspect was going back to uncovering some of the thought patterns and behaviors that even made me fall into the cycle so that I would never fall back into the cycle again. So if I was to ask you after telling you all this, well, when was that time? Well, you have to understand there was no singular time. There was multiple components during the recovery journey. And this is also why a lot of people get stuck because there's so many points of failure in the recovery journey that it's hard to navigate on your own. So well, the biggest thing to really understand in this video is don't go with this notion of when was that moment? When was that singular event? Recovery doesn't happen like that. And if you're still too focused on that, you're gonna miss a lot of the important things that I mentioned in this video, which is recovery doesn't happen like that. So it's important not to look for it like that. The biggest thing to really look at is how did recovery look like for other people? And there's a bunch of success stories, 
down below too that you can check it out and you can see how they're recovering as well. Now the last thing I want to mention is a lot of people are not even in the later stages. What I find a lot of people in this channel are in the very beginning. They're still trying to figure out their symptoms. So they, a lot of the things that I'm mentioning here, they're going to, you might try to evaluate where you are at. And the problem is, is that when you're doing this on your own, it's very hard. So what I recommend again, is always finding somebody who's gone through this, who helps people to really guide you through the process. I think there's a lot of value in these videos, but there's a different level of guidance when somebody is fully guiding you through the journey. So what I recommend is have somebody really guide you through the process who knows the roadmap of recovery and really trust in them. Because while you're going through this journey, you might try to evaluate where you're at in the journey. And it's very hard to do, and I often find it actually confuses a lot of people and it makes them spiral. They feel like they were here, but they weren't. And because they weren't, they end up sabotaging their recovery because they get frustrated. They had a symptom that was getting better and then it comes back and they feel like they did something wrong. Or maybe they did do something wrong, it's hard to tell. And what happens is they spiral. And so it's very hard to think your way out of recovery. Recovery doesn't happen from thinking your way out. So I really hope this video helps. I hope it gives you an idea of when was that time where I recovered. And instead of focusing on that really, it's important to understand how that is. I think it's a good idea to have perspective, but now that you have perspective, it's really focused on, okay, what do I need to do right now? And depending on where you're at in the journey, well, the answer is gonna vary. So I hope this video helps. If you really want me, my team, people that have recovered from anxiety to guide you through the process, to really help explain their part or their success, and also really guide you where you're at in the journey, well, you can hit the link down below and apply for mentorship. When you click the link, we'll have a quick call because we want to see exactly where you're at and really see if the mentorship is the right fit for you. And if it's something that can really help you on your journey. And if that's the case, my team and I will guide you through the process ourselves. The good news about the mentorship is that you're going to be around people that are in the exact same position that are actually making progress that are dedicated to recovery these aren't people that you find on forums that are panicking or in this victim mentality they're actually people that are proactively regaining their freedom so i hope this video helps and i'll see you in the next one